Good afternoon, guys. Welcome back into my channel. So in this demo, we're going to practice application load balancer. So in order for us to, to practice load balancer, so first and foremost, we are going to launch, I mean, we have to have I mean, I'll, I mean, in order for us to launch in a load balancer, so first we need to send traffic to something, right? So what we will do is we're going to launch two instances. Now, let's go to EC2. And let's say, so, yep. Um, Just remove these. I don't want to have no placement group here. We don't want to get charged for nothing. Uh, let's just leave things here on use. Let's just delete that. Say delete. 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 And just remove this last one. Okay, so now let's just go to instances, launch. Now, by the way, you may wonder what is load balancer, right? So let's just go ahead and and just pull up Google. What is scalability? Scalability versus um, I would say what is scalability and high availability what is scalability and high availability? AWS cloud. Okay, so so according to AWS, what is scalability and high availability? So let me hold up. Let's see what Google tells us here first. What is high availability and scalability in AWS? So single point of failure, which is SPOF, are commonly eliminated with an N plus one or two times N redundancy configuration where N plus one is, is archived. Or, no, no, is where one plus one is achieved via load balancing among active active nodes and two two n is achieved by a pair of node in active standby configuration and this is pretty neat what is scalability and high availability so a successful production uh, that's probably a different. So a successful production environment requires database system that are always available, which minimal if any plan outages and that can be scaled quickly and easily as business requirements change. Now let's check 
this website to see what AWS have as description of this. Now, high availability and scalability on AWS. So most providers of real-time communications align with service levels that provide availability from 99.9% .9 to 99.999%, depending on the degree of high availability that you want, you must take increasingly sophisticated measure along the full life cycle of the application. So AWS recommends following these guidelines to achieve a robust degree of high availability. So design the system to have no single point of failure. Use automated monitoring failure detection and failover mechanism for both stateless and stateful components. So here, single point of failure, SOF, SPOF, are commonly eliminated with an N plus one or two time, I mean, and two ends, Redundancy configuration where N plus one is achieved via load balancing among active active nodes and the two N is achieved by a pair of nodes in active standby configuration. So AWS has several methods for, for achieving high availability through both approaches, such as through a scalable load balance cluster or assuming an active standby pair. Correctly instrument and, and test system availability. So prepare operating procedure for manual mechanism to respond to, mitigate and recover from the failure. So let's see, that's basically the definition. So this section focused on how to achieve no single point of failure using capabilities available on AWS, specifically this section described a subset of core AWS capabilities and design patterns that allow you to build high available real-time communication applications. Okay, so now you could switch back over. So we're going to create two web server. Now it could have been, it, it would have been easier for us to just go here and switch and make it two. But I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna be, make it more. Spe I mean, more specific. Let me create two web server. Let me call this my web server one. Let me call this my first web server. My first. Come on, my first web server. Right, I can, let's call this my, my first web server primary. I can leave this, the image as Amazon Linux, AWS, bang, bang, bang. I don't really need a key pair. If I want, I could just attach one here, which I have my AWS key. So the key pair is whether if I want to SSH into this machine, I could use Amazon Home Console. I can create a security group or either I can use an existing one, which I'm sure I have one here. Let's see what's the name. It's my low, my, 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 okay. So it's my web server group and let's scroll down. Let's click on details, advanced details, I mean. Mm, 
I will scroll all the way down here. And so once I get here, I will switch to my little note here. I can copy this wall code and switch back. Let's paste this. So as I'm pasting this, let's see if there's any modification that needs to be made here. Um, just to avoid this not to work. So let's go here. Let's go. Oh. Okay. Now let's see. This is my first web server. This is my first EC2 web server. Let me call this I'm the primary. It make no difference. You could give it any name you'd like. This will not make any difference. Let's paste this. Um. Me. Just read my code to make sure that I have everything done in order and decency. Um, um, okay. Now, let's bring this closer. I am the primary. I am the primary. So yes, let's just copy this and let's launch this instance. What do I have to have a key pair for? Okay, let's launch this instance. Now I don't think you have to wait for the second one. Let's just go here and launch this. Let's, I mean, another instance. And I will name this. Looking for my second, let's call this second web server. And let's leave the same image Amazon Linux. Let's scroll down, let's grab this keeper. Let's call, we're gonna leave everything as default. We're gonna select on. Existing security group just to allow HTTP and SSH traffic. My web server, if you don't have one, you could create one. You click this one here and create one, but since I already have one, so I will use it. I'm gonna go down here and what I will do is I will scroll all the way down and just paste this code again. Now I will just make a, this little small changer. I am the secondary. Oh, I am the backup, backup server. Let's call this backup server. I am the backup server. Okay. So now I will launch this instance. Now let's go into instances. And there we go. Both of our instances is being um, in process, what's going on? It's just showing just let's just show you one. Let's wait to see what is where's the other one? Let's go on instance. Okay, so both of them is here. Okay. So now if I click on the primary and just grab the public IP, copy it, go here, paste it, and let's see what we got. Now you see I'm the primary. Now let's 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 switch back to this. Let's select the secondary. Let's copy the IP address. Let's paste it here. 
I'm going to say, okay, we don't mind this. This is just a, I mean, a warning that you get from HTT, I mean, from, from HTTPS saying that the connection is not secure because it's port 80, it's not 443. I don't mind this. I can continue. So I'm the backup. So there go my primary and there go my backup. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a load balancer to load balance into those two web servers. So let's switch back into the portal. We're going to scroll down the left hand side until we get here and see load balancers. You're going to click on that. We're going to, we're going to click on create load balancer. Now, Guys, this is very important. The only thing we don't have here anymore is classic load balancers. We have application load balancer, network load balancer, and gateway load balancer. So so we have different load balancers type. You could tell in this demo, we're going to look, I mean, to only look, we only, we're, gonna, we're going to only look for, look at the application load balancer, but you need to understand the difference between application load balancer, network load balancer, and gateway load balancer, okay? So if you read here, you would see ALB, which means application load balancer, Choose an application load balancer when you need a flexible future set for your application with HTTP and HTTPS traffic. Operating at the request level, application load balancer provides advanced routing and visibility feature targeted at application architecture, including microservices and containers. So basically what that is, is that an application load balancer, it function at layer seven on the OSI model. And app, an application load balancer is, is used for intelligence. It's traffic for uh, HTTP and HTTPS, which is, at, which is at layer seven on the OSI model. So now a network load balancer is here for speed. This used for intelligence, this used for speed. Now on the network load balancer, let's read that first and then I can tell you. So choose a network load balancer when you need ultra high performance, which is TLS, which means transport layer security. This year. Offloading at scale, centralized certificate deployment support for UDP and static IP addresses for your applications. Operating at the connection level, network load balancers are capable of handling millions of requests per second securely while maintaining ultra low latency. This is very important. And also you have, last but not least, is gateway load balancer. So choose a lot, I mean, a gateway load balancer when you need to deploy and manage a fleet of third-party virtual appliance that support Geneva. I'm not sure if I pronounce this word right. These appliances enable you to improve security compliance and policy controls. So this load balancer used for speed and performance. So it operates on the layer for the OSI model, which is transport layer. It's used as protocol. Now the ALB protocol is HTTP and HTTPS. This one here is port 80. This year is port 443. This year is TCP and UDP and TLS. So this is TCP and UDP. TCP is more 
um a secure way to to i mean to send traffic into the network it it's not as 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 it's not as fast as udp is but udp is 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 is, is more connectionless this would guarantee your traffic i mean this would guarantee your traffic and make it reach a, de a destination with more i mean I mean, with more assurance, whereas this is more, this would more used for performances, for speed, but this will not guarantee your packet to reach its destination as this will be. So that's the difference. Now let's see what port number is TCP and UDP use to send traffic. Google. What is the port number? What is port number? What is port number? Is TCP and UDP. So TCP use port 25 and UDP. So TCP use port, no. SM, SMTP use port 25 and TCP and UDP well, that's DNS. I'm not sure. So how do I find the TCP and UDP port number? Next out. Okay. All right, guys. So now, while we're here, let's do what is what is the difference between ALB, ALB, and network load balancer and LB, and G, gateway load balancer, GLB. Let's see if this, if I'm right. I think this was GLB, right? Come on, just one way. It's GLB, all right. So ALB versus NLB and GLB. That's easy so AWS different different difference between application load balancer. I prefer I prefer the source. I mean, um, let's see what we have here. Balancer. This is layer seven. And there's the application load balancer. This is the network load balancer. And that's the gateway load balancer. So what we have for layer three gateway plus layer four load balancing. So classic load balancer, which no longer used in the AWS platform. So target type, an application load balancer use IP instance to Lambda. Network load balancer use IP instance application load balancer, and this is IP instance for gateway load balancer. I'm not satisfied with what I'm seeing here. I wish they were going in depth. So security, high availability, high throughput, health check. I'm not satisfied. I wish I had um, something that goes in depth explaining these things with more techie, Ten point, I would say, as, as like you know, with a, with a network background, I would say. Think, think, think. What are the difference? Difference between application load balancer and what? Uh, let's see what this guy put here. So the difference between application load balancer and network load balancer, but it doesn't give you the gateway load balancer anyway. So comparing application load balancer and network load balancer, let's go fast and see. So both application load balancer and network load balancer are designed from the group up for the more modern paradigm of dynamic port configuration as commonly seen in containerized deployment. Picking which load balancer is right for you, for you will depend on the specific needs of your application, such as whether or not network traffic is HTTP, whether you need to SSH, I mean SSL and TLS encryption and whether or you need or whether whether or not you want host and path 
based traffic routing. If you are deploying Docker containers and using a load balancer to send network traffic to, to them, EC2, EC2 containers services provide tight integration with ALB and NLB so you can keep your, your, your load balancer in sync as you start up and stop containers across your fleet application load balancer this future feel they are serving of the OSI model. I got this already. This is what, okay, this is, these are the protocol. And this is the protocol, as I was telling you. Now, where's the G? Let's see what is gateway load balancer for them. I think that's that, that should be a better search. What is, Gateway, load balancer. Okay. So gateway load, bal load balancer helps you easily deploy, skill and manage your third party virtual, uh, I mean, virtual appliance. It gives you one gateway for distributing traffic across multiple virtual appliance while scaling them up or down based on demand. This, decrease, this decreases potential point of failure in your network and increase availability. You can find, test, and buy virtual appliance from a third-party vendor directly in AWS market. Please, this integrated experience streamlines the deployment process so you see value from your virtual appliance more quickly, whether you want to keep working with your current vendors or try something new. So that's the benefit. Bang, bang, bang. I think I'm good with this. That's, that's, that's fair enough. Okay, so let's switch back and create our application load balancer today. So we're gonna name this. We could name this test that ALB um demo. Test that ALB demo. And what are we gonna do? We going to scan this. At what? We're going to scan this at internal facing. So you have different choices. You have internal facing, you have internal, and you have IP address type IPv4. I would leave it as IP address IPv4. I will scroll down. So network, network mapping, I will choose all the availability zone that they have available. So then do I have to create subnet? See, see, do I have to create subnet? I can use the default subnet. I can use the default subnet. So let's just select, select. I'm going to select all the availability zone that they have available here. Now, on site, which down here to security group, there's a default security group you could use, but I prefer will create my security group myself. For my load balancer, so I'm going to give it a rule. Um, I could make this my L, my A, oh, my my SG load balancer. I can give it a description which allows 
HTTP into my application load balancer. I can add the wool, which so in bound wool, I could say custom allow traffic from HTTP. So we need to only allow HTTP traffic as well. So allow HTTP into the load balancer is going to allow all the HTTP from anywhere. Allow HTTP from anywhere to any source. Right. Now, I think I'm good. Now let's go ahead and we're going to leave the outbound rules as default. Everything is okay. So let's just go ahead and create this, this application, I mean, this, this, this security group. So now let's switch back into this. Let's click here. Let's look for the, the ALB load balancer. Let's play here yet. Okay, so let's just refresh or oh, what? Did that make any change? Hopefully it does not. Does it look like there's any change? Let's go on security group. Uh oh, what's going on here? Oh. We gotta reselect these again. Now let's go down and hopefully it shows our. Okay, so that that go right there. So we have it. You might just see as well. We move the. The default one that we had, it looks like we have everything that we need right now. So could I just refresh it from here too? Okay, so now let's scroll down. We have the listener and routing. So the listener and routing, it's going to to, to, to listen to traffic from HTTP and port 80. So, so now we can create a target group. So, so we are going to underline listener and routing. So we need to route the traffic from HTTP on port 80, like I said to a target group and a target group is nothing more than a group of my EC2 instances that we created. So this, so for this, we need to create this, we need to create a, we need to create a target group. So let's go ahead and create this target group. So, so the group instances together, but you can see you have other options right there as IP addresses, as Lambda function and application load, load balancer. But you can see you, I mean, so we want to group instances together. So I'll call, let me call mine, my target group. Um, name can I give that? Let me call this test that target target load balancer. Okay, so then So the protocol is HTTP on port 80. 
So you have different options. You have different options. The protocol is okay. And down here, you have, so down here, guys, So the HTTP, the HTTP one, so we'll keep it as one. And you have the health check, which on HTTP, so everything is okay. So let's just go down here and click next. And um, so we go, so we have, so, Okay, so then when we click next on there, then we need to register our target. So we're going to register both, both of our servers instances on port 80. So let's include them as spanning below. So let's just do that. So they are registered on port 80, as you can tell. And let's scroll down. So we have both of them. Let's just create target group. Now, if you, so there we go, we could select this. So let's go, let's switch back here. And let's refresh. And we have our target group that we created a pair here. And we select it. So we have everything else like default action is still by default. It's going to allow traffic to port 80. And the protocol is HTTP. So it looks like we have everything that we need to create our load, our load balancer. So let's just go ahead. It looks like it's the summary of everything that we have done as configuration. So it says attributes and default attributes will be applied to your load balancer. You can, you can view and edit them after creating the load balancer. So let's just create the load balancer. Oh, load balancer name. <laughs> My, uh-oh. Okay, so it's all lowercase. My web oh okay web server load I'll answer okay so the name and down here let's just go ahead and create what is it says Suggested next step. So we view custom, customize and enable attributes for your load balancer and listener using description and listener tab. My web server load balancer. Discover other the, the, the services that you can integrate to your load balancer. Visit bang, bang, bang. Okay, okay, okay. So let's view our load balancer. Now there go my load balancer. It have a state of provisioning. And um, now if we refresh, let's see if the, if the states will be active. Okay, so it's still provisioned. It's still provision. Got to wait till it, till it active. So we need to wait until the provisioning, until it is provisioning. Now let's see. Um, Let's select it. We have the listener. So everything that we that 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 we con we've configured. So we have six availability zones into this load balancer. So this is pretty neat. 
see. So this state is still provision. Would that need to be active so we can create? Okay, so there we go. So now all we need is, as you can see, that there's a DNS available. There is a DNS name available for the, I mean, on the load balancer. So I'm going to copy this and I will paste this into a new tab and, and um, to test our load balancer. So let's just copy it and paste it. And let's hit enter. See what's going on here. So, okay. We it looks like we have a connection. Holy crap. 503 service temporary and available. Why is this? I'm not sure. Um I'm not sure why. So the 503 is an hypertext protocol, I mean, transfer protocol, HTTP 503, service unavailable, server error respond code indicate that the server is not ready to handle the request. So common costs, causes are a server that is down for maintenance or is overloaded. Hmm. Let's refresh. Let's refresh this. Not sure why. Um, let's check our instances. So both of them are running, and they here just proof of that. the The primary is here, and the server is there. So why is it overloaded? Let's just close them and see. Hold up. Switch back. Come on. Me switch back into the console. Tell you what, let's just close this just to make this make this it's pretty neat. And let's go to load balancer down here. Now let's select our load balancer and let's copy it and let's paste it. See if it's gonna work this time. I do problem. Um, I'm not sure why we have this. I tell you what. Let's go on instances. Yeah. Something is running slow here. Obviously. Tell you what, let's just close this for now. And let's log back into the console and see. Let's go on EC2. Basically, that's all that you need to create a load balancer. Um, let's just stop those. Stop those instances. Bear with me, please. Okay, let's refresh. Let's click on instance, let's select both of them, and let's start those instance. Let's refresh until we have both of the instances are active, then we'll switch to the load balancer and see what we got. So it's still on pending states. Uh, 
Okay, so the both are running now. Let's go. Good balancer. Select it. So you could either. This is something. It's good. Put the stickers off. That will happen. Number four. I guess we, is it because it's available on all of these zone, availability zone or what? IPv6 does not apply, which is good. That's how I wanted it to be. Security. We have an SG. Create one. That's okay. It's for request time. For the balancer is LT or not. Let's check again. 53. It's like. NS attributes, tag, tag, okay, details. I'm not sure why. Let's try this again. Let's grab another. So my web server load balancer, plastic load balancer. The name of my load balancer. It says it's not secure, so obviously. Not sure. The name would have something to do with that. But I can rename this. Um edit it. Action. Submit. So elastic load balancing scale your load balancer capacity automatically in response to change in incoming traffic. So edit traffic type, edit subnet, edit security group, edit load balancer attributes. Let me see something. TTP, so send request to the load balancer using the protocol version. HTTP, sync, defensive, append. I'm not sure why. Um, what is going on? It doesn't work. I gotta select it first. Let's refresh. Yeah. Refresh again. This is pretty everything that we need to create this load balancer. So if if it doesn't work, it's not because we make a mistake, it's probably because it's it's been available on all these zones and it's running slow. Hmm. Let's see. Switch the balancer. I'll go here. So we'll copy this. Space it. to be service unavailable. Okay, I'll tell you what, I will test this and I will resume on the next lecture. So thank you so very much for following on. Stay tuned for another lab configuration. I'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.